Well, good morning, church. It is good to be with y'all this morning and to say welcome to worship here at First Christian Church, Disciples of Christ. Uh, whether you are in the sanctuary this morning, if you are joining us online, uh, watching later, uh, we are glad that you are here. Uh, we pray that you can find whatever it is that you need uh, from this time together. Uh, if you're here for the first time, uh, we would love for you to fill out a visitor's card and you can place that in the offering basket on your way out. Uh, that'll be a way for us to get to know you just a little bit better. Uh, this Sunday is the fourth Sunday of Advent. Um, and even in the midst of all that has been going on around us, the light continues to grow brighter. God draws nearer. A love does indeed surround us. Uh, perhaps your Advent preparation is going a little differently than expected. And yet, church, we come into worship claiming the truth that in all circumstances, Christmas still comes. Uh, so as we enter into this time of worship, I invite you to hear these words from Anne Weems uh, from her poem called Christmas Comes. Uh, may it be a, both a reminder and a prayer uh, for us this morning. Uh, Christmas comes every time we see God in other persons. The human and the holy meet in Bethlehem or in Times Square. For Christmas comes like a golden storm on its way to Jerusalem. Determined, inevitable. Even now it comes, in the face of hatred and warring, no atrocity too terrible to stop it, no Herod strong enough, no hurt deep enough, no curse shocking enough, no disaster shattering enough. For someone on earth will see the star, someone will hear the angel voices, someone will run to Bethlehem, someone will know peace and goodwill, the Christ will be born. Let us enter into this time of worship. Oh, 
God's love is wide open. God's love is a light that guides us to the shelter of each other. God's love is a warm and embracing. God's love is a table with room for everyone. God's love is a community that shows up for each other. God's love is phone calls and check-ins, hugs and embrace. God's love sustains us and nudges us. God's love surrounds us. You and me, neighbors and strangers, family and friends, enemies and partners. God's love is for all. Today, we light the candle of love to remind us of this truth. May it burn brightly in this space and even brighter in our hearts. Amen. Come wander where lion and lamb gently play, where evil is banished and faith takes the day. A babe in a manger to fool the world's eyes. One candle is lit for God's loving surprise. Good morning, church. As we go to God in prayer this morning, we continue to pray for Nathan Lipscomb, who's at Hospice House. And we lift up Debbie and John Faircloth's daughter, Liz DeWeese, who tested positive for COVID this week and will be in quarantine through December 23rd. I also want to thank all of you for your prayers, for my friend Amy. Uh, she is still in the ICU and she is still intubated. Um, but this morning, I would like to lift up her daughter, Gabby. Um, Gabby is nine years old, and I can't imagine how she's feeling um, having her mom in the hospital this long. So I just ask that you pray for her during this difficult time. Uh, Fran's son, Dwayne, is having his other hip replaced this week. So we pray for quick healing uh, for Dwayne. And we continue to pray for our community and all that has been lost in the wake of the tornado. Holly Vincent has organized a candlelight vigil to honor those lives lost and to look to the future with hope. This vigil will be um, put on by the city at Hot Rod Stadium at 5 p.m. Uh, that is tomorrow. And Megan and Reverend Lee will speak together at the event. So I hope that you all can come out for that. And we celebrate with the Gerard family. Um, Melissa welcomed baby Charlie Mitchell Gerard. Um, he's healthy, eight pounds, four ounces. He was born at 11.07 a.m. on December 17th. So we celebrate with them this morning and we welcome Charlie to the world. Let us go to God in prayer. Good morning. Let's pray together. God, light in the darkness. It doesn't feel like Christmas is coming. We are sad. It's chaotic and distressing times. Our neighbors, 
friends and family are hurting, even those of us sitting here in these pews are grieving deep losses. But you have promised us, you have promised us Emmanuel. You have promised us your presence, your comfort, your healing, your help, a balm for our wounds. And we are claiming this blessing now. We are claiming it, God. Emmanuel, God with us. Let your presence heal, but let us also be your presence. A hug, a meal, a box of diapers, the arms that carry away debris, the money to start again. We need you, but you need to also give us the strength to be your light, the light in the darkness. And so, together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. At this time, we invite our children to children worship and wonder. morning church. It is so good to be together with you today. Let us listen now for the good news according to the gospel of Luke chapter 1 verses 39 through 45. In those days Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. This is the word of God, and in it we can trust. Well, y'all... Jeannie's prayer got me shook up a little bit. This last week has been something, hasn't it? Despite long days, I've noticed that Willie and the girls and I have ended up around tables with family and friends a lot this week. I've heard stories from some of you that you went to stay with family for a few nights, not necessarily because you had damage to your home, but because of just that need to be together. Now, I will admit that none of the meals I've shared this week 
have been as fancy as those Christmas dinners we look forward to. No ham and green bean casserole, no fancy table settings or perfect ambiance, but instead it's been cold pizza, cheese and crackers, or drinks shared sitting on a couch in a family room covered in baby toys. It has been whispered conversations that we don't want the children to hear in candle-lit living rooms. Or even the warm embrace of my friend Andy, covered in paint, who surprised me to the point of tears when I pulled into the church parking lot on Thursday morning and saw her Bowling Green Strong mural that she had been painting since early that morning on the building next to us. But y'all, these moments have been sacred ones. They have reminded us that we are not alone and that we aren't the only ones who feel, who feel worried or anxious or afraid. Also, most of these informal gatherings have included a healthy dose of laughter. Even amidst the rubble, there is usually something to smile about. So when I read the scripture for this morning for Advent 4, I thought about it and felt like I understood it a little bit differently, like, okay, so Mary just received the most shocking news of her life. And she goes where? She goes to visit her cousin, Elizabeth. And so I imagine them huddled together at a candlelit table, clutching mugs of warm tea, leaning in as they shared stories of pregnancy and miracles of God that no one else could possibly understand. They both experience this major thing in their lives. And even though I'm sure it was the most amazing thing that had ever happened to them, I bet that it was also pretty terrifying. This week, I reached out to some of the mental health professionals in our church to ask them for help with resources for people who have experienced trauma a.k.a. all of us. People feeling afraid. Carl Lavez sent me a copy of the email he wrote for the students at Western, and there were a few lines that especially stood out that I wanted to share with you today. He said this, Watching others who have gotten through disasters in the past has taught us that we can do the same. But... It takes support. We are not built to be strong by ourselves. So the first thing we encourage students to do following the recent natural disaster in Bowling Green is to connect with others. Share your stories. Express your worries. Don't keep it bottled up. And don't worry about being a burden by expressing your worries. People need to know that they are not the only ones who are worried. So first step, connect with others and talk it out. Isn't it a little bit wild that Mary, mother of Jesus, knew instinctively that she needed to connect with her cousin Elizabeth? The scripture tells us that she stayed there for three months, and I love to imagine how they might have filled their days. Mary and Elizabeth surely possessed no psychology degrees, but still somehow they knew we are not built to be strong by ourselves, indeed. This Sunday is the final Sunday of Advent, and the theme is love. 
Last week's theme of joy seemed so ill-fitted in the wake of the storm. But love, it couldn't fit any better to describe the collective experience of last week. I think that often during Advent, we celebrate love in ways that takes for granted the grittiness of it. But this year, we can't miss it because it's right before our eyes. Love is the strangers who show up and start cleaning our yard. Love is the volunteers sleeping for over a week in the church basement so that they can tarp roofs blown off by the storm. Love is children and youth and teachers walking through neighborhoods, handing out water and sandwiches and pizza. Love is musicians visiting a school crowded with our traumatized babies, giving them a reason to sing, even after losing everything. Love is an artist like Andy, who shows up and starts painting because our community needed to see something beautiful this week. And I dare say, we've seen something beautiful this week. It's true that this Christmas won't be like other ones. And I think many of us are afraid because of all that our community has lost. But maybe it will also be different because of what we've gained. A renewed love and respect for our neighbors. A sense that if the tornado had hit our house, or those of you who it did, you know this to be true, that if the tornado hit your house, that there would be someone there to pick up the pieces. And the profound realization that there are people around the country and even around the world who have sent uh, our church money because they trust us to steward the gifts in the coming days and weeks and months of rebuilding, that they trust this congregation to help with the rebuilding because you guys are the helpers. So by this last Sunday of Advent, most of us are bursting with anticipation for the big day Christmas Eve worship, I can't wait. This year we need it more than ever. And Christmas morning celebrations. Enough with the waiting, we say. We want to see the Christ child. But Elizabeth and Mary's waiting together. I wonder if it could teach us the most important lesson of all about what we do and where we go when we don't yet know the end of our story. About the moments when confusion confounds us and the journey ahead, it feels like it might just be a little too long, too hard, or too scary. How many times this week have I heard the question asked in our community, but what are we going to do? What about the ones without insurance? What about the ones without resources to replace the things to make a household run? What are we going to do about the lack of housing and when the volunteers leave and on and on and on? I imagine that surely this was one of the first questions that came up between Mary and Elizabeth in hushed whispers. Elizabeth, what are we going to do? Light the candles. 
Get out the cheese and crackers. Don't worry about the perfect Christmas. Even as we wait, church, even as we grieve, even as we wonder what exactly the future holds, love will show us the way. Amen. On Monday evening, the elders and the board members of FCC met in Carter Hall for a Christmas dinner. Uh, over the weekend, Megan and the staff, we went back and forth trying to decide if we should cancel this festive event or continue as planned. Uh, my gut told me that we should have it, so we did, and I'm glad. The mood was somber and more quiet than it normally would have been. There were some folks missing because of the chaos surrounding our community. Um, others were grateful to be in a warm building and have a warm meal. It was good to be together. It was necessary to be together. It was good to gather around the table in our grief and in our relief. As Megan mentioned, today is Love Sunday, and love is found at this table, and at the dinner table, and at the picnic table, if you want to call it that, where a lot of our workers have been eating this week. But love is also found all around, and Megan listed several ways that love is seen and has been seen this week. Um, so I just want to add a few others. I see love in a BGMU lift bucket carrying our linemen. Uh, Megan mentioned bottles of water and sandwiches handed out to volunteers. In our youth who have spent every day since they woke up the night after the storm, helping strangers, just going out with their friends and helping strangers. I see love in the Christmas bags that we will deliver to 57 families after church today. Love is found in each one of us as an extension 
of the love we feel here, God's love. So come to the table this morning and receive that love. Fill up on it. Breathe it in. Taste it in the bread and the cup, which I wish was cheese and crackers, because that sounds really good. And go out full and ready to take on another week, because Lord knows we need it. All are welcome at this table. On the night that Jesus gathered in an upper room with his friends and disciples, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he also took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant poured out for all. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the bread of life and the cup of God's love for you and all are welcome at Christ's table. Let us pray. God of love, we have seen you show up this week, and for that we are grateful. We know that you are present with us always. We know that Christmas is coming. We know that Emmanuel, God, with us is coming, and we cling to that. We cling to that hope and the peace that it will bring. We gather around this table knowing that your love is here, that it sustains us and provides us the strength that we need. We take it, Lord. We receive it willingly. It's in your son's name that we are grateful for these things. Amen. I hope you heard it this morning, church. Love does indeed surround us. Um, And I want to acknowledge that that love is so deeply rooted in the life of this congregation. Um, This is a love that has vision, a love that responds, a love that sustains, that prompts us to share gifts that allow us to do ministry in ways that we never thought imaginable or in ways we never thought we would need need to do. Um, Many of you know that over the last week we've had disaster response groups, um, Hope Force International, uh, Masters of Disaster, um, staying in the youth room. Um, These are folks from all over the country, uh, from California to Ohio, um, that have been here to lend their help and skilled labor abilities uh, to help with the immediate relief work needed. We were able to host these groups in our space because of this congregation's vision many years ago of turning the youth room and the downstairs area into a space that could be a hub for outreach. And with it came showers, a kitchen, a space comfortable to gather and sleep in. That stewardship of gifts then has allowed us to do ministry now in ways that we might not have ever predicted. A reminder that God can do amazing things with gifts shared with love and imagination. In church, your generosity has been a source of light and love that has allowed us to respond to immediate needs in the last week and will allow us to be in the long-term work of recovery and rebuilding in our community. 
Uh, so many folks wanted to give to our church for relief efforts that we started a tornado relief fund, and in the last few days alone, we were able to work with the housing authority to buy furniture for displaced families, um, furniture bought at a discount thanks to Sam Kirtley at United Furniture, and we were able to deliver gift cards to our folks who have been most impacted by the storms. Church, y'all are amazing. Um, and in this hard week, I could not be more grateful to share in this ministry with you and thankful for the ways that you love with vision, with imagination, and in ways that will sustain and even surprise us in the days ahead. Um, if you are with us in person, you can drop off your offering in the basket as you leave. Uh, if you are joining online, you can share your monetary offerings by clicking the link by mail or dropping them off in the locked mailbox. Uh, church, let us pray. God of love, we give you thanks uh, that you meet us here, that you show us the ways of love, uh, that we get to be in a community of folks willing to do that gritty love work together. Uh, we share of our gifts generously, uh, with courage and with imagination, trusting uh, that you use them, you use us, uh, to share love with our community uh, in ways that will surprise us, uh, in ways that we may not be able to predict. Uh, we give you thanks, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, a few announcements before we close and begin our congregational meeting. Um, First of all, uh, Steve and Deb are here this morning from Woodmont and from Hope Force, and I just want to express our deep gratitude um, to Hope Force for all the work that you have done in assisting our community. We are so incredibly grateful um, that you came here and helped us. And they're going to be they're going to be in touch with us after the first of the year um, to help us understand a little bit more about what they they do and um, if they can partner with us in the future. And so we are excited about that. And now I just love the group that they've handed it over to. Now the basement belongs to the masters of disaster. <laughs> um, that's really their name. They're a church group. And um, in all seriousness, they are specializing in debris removal. So I've tried to reach out to you guys who have damage in your home, um, but I'm learning every day new people that I didn't know that had damage. And so if you know someone that needs um, the Masters of Disaster to come help them, um, please let me know. They have done an awesome job, both Hope Force and this other group of um, getting to our church members who need help, but also to the wider community. Um, Okay, there's a congregational meeting. Oh, I want to tell you about one more thing. Uh, good news report about our tornado relief fund. Um, we have been reached out to by members of the international community. There's a group of African professors who are going to be preparing culturally appropriate foods for displaced refugees specifically. Um, they may be cooking out of our kitchen this week or they may end up um, going over to Soki's kitchen um, over at Soki Marketplace. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited that we can partner with them in this work. They plan to feed, as of yesterday, about 22 families um, comfort foods because when bad things happen, we have certain kinds of foods that we want to eat, right? And so making sure that our neighbors are loved in that way. So I just wanted to share that report with you all and we'll keep you posted. And if it's chaos with the food bank and with people cooking in our kitchen, you will know why, but it will be a blessed chaos, I am sure. Um, after worship, we have our congregational meeting. For those of you um, who would rather not stay for that if you're not a member, or um, you're welcome to stay if you're not a member also, but if you have somewhere to be, we'll give you the opportunity um, to exit at that point. We are doing our food bags, as Kyle mentioned, and you can either pick one up right after worship or right after the congregational meeting, but we will need to deliver 57 food bags and we really appreciate your help with that. Um, also, uh, 
for those of you who are online with us, the uh, congregational meeting will be by Zoom as well. So if you're on Facebook, if you want to switch over to the Zoom link, the same one as worship, that's where the congregational meeting will be held and Kyle will be in the back trying to help um, get feedback from our Zoom community as well. Uh, this week is Christmas Eve, and we will have worship at 5 and at 7. I am most excited for the music and for the communion and for the candlelight. And so I hope you can come um, let your friends and your neighbors know um, that it will indeed be holy ground. And I can't wait to worship with you all as we welcome the Christ child. Um, and finally, Santa's coming! Um, Santa is going to be here from 3 until 5, and this is actually a fundraiser for Habitat for Humanity. I'm really excited to see how our partner, Habitat and Humanity, is going to work in the coming weeks and months to help our neighbors, and so it seems even more important now than ever to support them in their work. So Maybell and Evie will be getting their pictures with Santa, um, and then, so anyone's welcome to come get their picture with Santa, and also, am I forgetting something? Oh, okay. Okay, I'll, I'll go back to that. All right. Um, so you can come and see Santa. Also, um, I am bringing my girls to do a meal for our volunteers so that we can talk to our littles about what's happening. Um, anyone who wants to come and bring their little ones to help cook that meal and just have a conversation about what's going on in Bowling Green right now and how we make sense of it, um, you are welcome to join us for that. But do let me know so we have enough food. Um, Kyle mentioned if you're doing a food bag, please pull up to the exterior door of Carter Hall and our volunteers um, will get you set up. And so now um, I'm going to hand it over to the choir. I'm so grateful that we get to hear not one, but two choral pieces this morning.
will you rise for our benediction? Following our benediction, we are going to sing together. Um, and then there will be a postlude um, if you need to leave before the congregational meeting begins. Thank you, God, for the witness of your love that has come in the wake of disaster. We pray that we would be instruments of your love in the days ahead. Be with us as we do the business of your church, and may our business always be to love you and to love our neighbors faithfully. Amen. Oh.